Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're going verse by verse through the Gospel of Matthew. We come today to Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. So get your Bible, if it's possible. Open it up to Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. While you're doing that, the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Study the whole Bible with me. Four series going through the Bible at thebibleversebyverse.com. And you choose the series, you choose the book of the Bible, you choose the chapter, the section, and all you have to do is bring your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. Click and listen. That's at thebibleversebyverse.com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Matthew 12, verse 46. While he yet talked to the people, of course, talking about Jesus, behold, his mother and his brethren stood outside desiring to speak with him. Mary was probably worried about her son. His brothers, who didn't believe in him until after he was raised from the dead, probably thought that Jesus had lost his mind. Verse 47, Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand outside, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hands toward his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father who is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. <clears throat> and by saying that, Jesus was not disowning his mother and his brothers. But by, by saying that, he was saying that it's more important to be connected to him spiritually than it is to be connected to him physically. And it's more important for us to be connected to Jesus spiritually by making him our Lord and Savior and then living to please him than it is for us to be connected to even our blood relatives and do what is pleasing in their eyes. It's more important to please Jesus, to obey Jesus, than to do anything else. Our relationship with Jesus Christ, in other words, must be the most important thing, more important than relationships with parents, children, brothers and sisters, whatever the case may be. Never let your relationship with someone else deter you from doing what God wants you to do. Never. And I know that the, the psychologists have this, the Christian so-called psychologists have this completely backwards. It's been my experience. Well, no, 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 you set aside, you set aside what God has called you to do to, to nurture your relationship with your husband or your wife or whatever the case might be. That's just bunch of baloney. You never put Jesus second. You never put Jesus second in order to please someone else or in order to so-called nurture some other human relationship. You put Jesus first and you trust that by putting him first and living for him and living the word of God that he will take care of that human relationship if the other partner is going to do the same thing. If they're not going to do the same thing, well, yeah, then you know what? There's going to be division. And Jesus said, I didn't come to bring unity. I came to bring division between family members those who serve me and those who do not. That's just the way it is. And it is wrong to make an idol out of a marriage. It is wrong to make an idol out of any human relationship. So Jesus is saying it's more important to be connected to him spiritually than it is to be connected to him physically, like his brothers and his mother, or any other human relationship. Because you know, holy relatives are not going to get you into heaven. 
and your relationship with human beings, no matter how good it is, it's not going to get you into heaven. A person needs to repent of their sin and have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ in order to be right with God. And it's imperative that we put Jesus first, even if that disappoints other people. Chapter 13, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And if this house was typical of houses back then, it was probably one room about 10 feet by 10 feet. Think of that. One room, about 10 feet by 10 feet. So obviously it would not be big enough to hold the crowds who came to Jesus, which is probably why he went down by the water. <clears throat> Verse 2. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Jesus is using a boat for a stage, and the crowd is on the beach listening to him teach. So the boat is his stage and his podium, and the beach is the <clears throat> bleachers, or stands. Three, then he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now, of course, back in those days, and there was no farming machinery. In those days, a farmer would scatter seed by hand. He would just grab a handful and fling it back and forth. That was actually called broadcasting. So if you can picture in your mind an AM signal, if you've never seen an illustration of an AM signal, you might want to look it up online or something. Just take a look at, at the AM signal and how it spreads out. It spreads out in every direction. And that's sort of what sowing seed looked like in our Lord's day. Only it was done with a handful of seeds and the farmer would fling it back and forth. So he tells a story about a sower going forth to sow. And it, of course the seed went every which way. And when he sowed some of the seed fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured it. Verse 4. That was verse 4. You know what? Number 4 is missing from my Bible. So let me read it again. It, the verse isn't missing, but the number 4 is. And when he sowed, some of the seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. People used to walk on paths through fields, back in those days, which made the ground hard. Consequently, when seeds would land on those paths, they would just lay on top of the soil. The seeds hitting the soil became an easy meal for the birds because it just bounced on top of the hard, packed down dirt and laid there. The birds spot it, come and pick them up and eat them. Five, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. In some places where the farmer would sow seed, there was only a real thin layer of soil over large bedrocks. And on those places, the seed would grow quickly. A little bit of rain, seeds would shoot straight up faster than any other seeds planted anywhere else, they would go up quickly. But, of course, the, the roots wouldn't grow properly because of the rock that was right beneath the thin layer of soil. The only place the, the, the seed could, could grow would be up. It's not going to grow roots on that rock. And so, consequently, without roots, the plant, although it would shoot up, would die quickly as soon as the hot sun came out because there was no roots to feed it and to sustain it with water. Verse 7, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. So some soil had a lot of weeds, a lot of weeds, a lot of thorns, weeds, so on and so forth. The weeds grew faster and would use the good in the soil before the good plants 
had a chance to use any of it. They hogged it. And as a result, the good plants would die. They would be choked from a lack of nutrition that the weeds took. Verse 8, But other seeds fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. The good ground had plenty of soil. It was perfect. Plenty of soil. There was not, not any weeds, not any thorns, not any rocks. This is good, solid soil. Nothing to hinder the growth of the good plants, and they grew. Nine. He who has, who has ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus is saying, try to understand the spiritual meaning of this story, and Jesus is going to explain it beginning in verse 18. Verse 11. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it, it is not given. <clears throat> God is the one who reveals spiritual truths. God is the one who reveals to people, for example, that Jesus is God. God reveals these things to those who are willing to accept it. The Bible says if you're not willing, the Bible teaches if you're not willing to do the truth, then you're not going to understand it. He reveals truth to those who are willing to accept it. Those who do not want to learn will not understand. <coughs> Excuse me. 12. For so, Jesus says, first, whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even what he hath. People who want to understand and obey truth will understand more truth. Those who do not want to understand and obey truth will eventually stop believing the truth that they even currently believe. They'll lose that. People who pretend that something isn't true because they don't like it and they don't want it to be true will get to the point where they just won't believe it anymore. They lose what they have. 13, therefore speak I to them in parable, parables because they seeing see not, in hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is become gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted and I should heal them. So, this is what Jesus is saying in a nutshell. Each time a person willfully rejects what they know is true, it is as if a spiritual cataract grows over their soul. If they continue to reject truth, they will end up totally, 100%, spiritually blind. At that point, they no longer reject truth. That's already been done. At that point, they no longer reject truth because they don't even recognize it anymore to be able to reject it. And consequently, at that point, when your heart gets to be that hard because you have rejected truth and you no longer even see truth, you no longer even recognize truth, truth can't even get into your brain, can't even get into your soul, at that point you are a heartbeat out of hell. So don't play fast and loose with the Word of God. The moment you understand it, act on it, or you will lose it. And if you do it enough, you're dead, eternally dead, out of time. If you want to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, pray for God's word. Also, when you're at the BibleVerseByVerse.com studying, when you take a break, click the donate button at the top of the front page right there and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. We'll pick it up 
right here in verse 16 next.